Okay, I think now we can start. We're still, still in the process of collecting membership fees. As you uh, know, last year we introduced the notion of members in good standing. That is that only members who are current, their obligations, have voting rights. So if you want to vote, we have an election of, for uh, two open positions. You need to make sure that you actually have paid your membership fee. We have sent out an agenda for the meeting and also supporting documents. But before we go to the agenda, I would like to say a few words. As you all know, the member of the ex a member of the executive committee, Tarek Kamel, has passed away in October. And we would be amiss if we did not honor his memory and also think about him. I won't say much, but we all know him, and his memory was honored at the very opening as well, which was a very appropriate act to do, as he was also a chairman of the IGF meeting 2009 in Sharm el Sheikh. He was, uh, for us, a very close friend. He was a very active person in the IGFSA, and we really mourn him deeply. And may I ask you to honor his memory with a minute of silence? Thank you. Please be seated. A uh, few colleagues may also say a few words in his memory, but one of our members, Vint Cerf, sent an apology. He can't make it to the uh, General Assembly, but he wrote a few lines uh, remembering Tarek. May I ask Nigel to read out the email we had from Vint Cerf? Yes, thank you very much. Uh Marcus, and of course many of you will know that uh, Tarek Kamal uh, was a senior advisor to the uh, President and CEO of ICANN. He, uh, he, he joined uh, ICANN and uh, joined the Brussels office in uh, 2012, and I had the privilege to be with him in the, in the Brussels office. And then in 2014, uh, we set up the uh, office in, uh, in, in, in Geneva in, uh, in, in 2014. So I served with him from 2014 onwards, and his, his office is still there. This is a, uh, a message from Vint Cerf uh, for Tarek. I met Tarek as he became the president of the Egyptian Internet Society. At that time, as I recall, he was an advisor to the then Minister of Telecommunications of Egypt. His energy and his passion for his country's connection to the internet and use of information technology was ever evident. He was a steadfast advisor whose counsel was always helpful and whose dedication inspired others. He ascended to the position he once advised, Minister of Telecommunications for Egypt. It was a special treat to see him at ICANN after other internet-inspired meetings, as well as at Davos, where he able represented his country's telecommunications and information te telecommunications interests. I will surely miss him, but feel de deeply grateful for his friendship and his contributions to the internet story. Vint Cerf. Thank you. Thank you. And I took the floor without actually saying who I am for the transcript. I'm Marcus Kummer. I'm the chair of the IGFSA Executive Committee. I understand that Max would like to say a few words. No? No, I just wanted to say that I'm uh, here to represent Google. Ah, OK, understood. It was my mistake. Well, it, okay, uh, and there's also one member of the executive committee, as some of you already know, Marilyn Cade. She is not well and she cannot be with us. And I would take it that I can say in the name of the General Assembly, uh, send her best wishes for a speedy recovery. I go and visit her tomorrow in hospital. So I, I see nodding, so we can take that as a generally accepted uh, resolution of the General Assembly. With that, uh, we go then to the uh, agenda. Jennifer is in the process of pulling up 
the uh, agenda, but it was a very classical uh, ag agenda of the uh, tasks we have to do. We have to adopt the summary record of the last year's General Assembly we held in Paris. Uh, it's posted on our website, you have seen it. And uh, if there are no comments, wishes for amendment or improvement, I, I would take it that we accept and adopt the summary record of last year's General Assembly. I'm pulling it up still, I'm sorry. Still in the process of pulling it up, but it will be there. Yeah. I take it then a count to three, I have counted to three, that we can say we adopted the summary record of last year's General Assembly, which is posted uh, on the IGFSA website. And the uh, third agenda item is the election of two uh, members, two seats. Uh, that is my seat term has come to an end and the term of Eduardo Santoyo. And that these seats uh, need to be refilled, both Eduardo and myself. We are ready to stand for election and we had a third uh, candidate, Aiden, who is here in the room, who also put forward his name as a candidate. But uh, if we are ready to vote, we have... Um, were you going to turn it over to me? Then I'm turning it over okay. to uh, Avri, to, as I recuse myself, as I'm a candidate from that. So Avri, please, can you chair this agenda item? That Certainly. is the election of two members. Right. So, um, yeah, what I wanted to ask is, so we have three candidates, Aidan Ferdelein, uh, Marcus Kumar and Eduardo Santoyo, and I wanted to give each of them a chance to make a brief statement before we, we go to the vote uh, process. And uh, if it's okay, I will go with the alphabetical order I just went in. And, and therefore, Aiden, if you'd like to make a, a statement, please, the floor is yours. Hi everyone, my name is Aidan Bertolin. For those of you who don't know me, um, I'll just introduce myself very briefly. So I am a public interest technologist. Most recently, I was a fellow with the Mozilla Foundation, and I've been a member of the IGFSA for the past three years, possibly four years. I, I should probably uh, double check that. Uh, so I've, I've had the good fortune of attending three IGFs now. I've seen what I think works here. I've seen a few improvements I'd like to see, of course. Uh, and, I, and I've been able to uh, participate in other uh, internet freedom fora to see also what works and what doesn't. I believe that the IGF as a whole is a wonderful experiment in bringing stakeholders together to be uh, able to shape how a shared resource is managed. And I think I'm ready now to be able to contribute to the IGFSA in helping to better support the IGF so that it can become a more impactful space. So I think that my experience in, uh, in agenda setting processes, in contributing to different budgetary processes could also be useful to the IGF. Essay. While I don't have experience in fundraising, I do have experience in at least being able to offer insights into what is proper in appearance for the spending patterns of a nonprofit, for example. To be very clear, I'm not insinuating and I'm not implying at all that there has been anything improper in the past, not at all. But I do think that if we look at the financials for the IGFSA, there is a need to bring more money in, and I think that there is a need for some more transparency around all of the good projects that the IGFSA is supporting. Mm -hmm. I think that many of the national and regional initiatives are great, um, but we definitely need to know uh, what exactly is the impact of the IGFSA's funding on making these national and regional initiatives so important. And so that is something that I hope to be able to contribute to in the future as well. So in whatever way I can, I hope to be able to make a difference to the IGFSA, hoping to help support the small secretariat, help the dedicated executive committee, and help other members so that together we can make sure that the IGF 
and the various national and regional initiatives are stronger. And hopefully we can find some solutions together to some unaddressed um, issues along the way. Thanks very much for your consideration. Thank you, Aidan, and, and apologies for having mispronounced your last name. I'd actually never said it before for all the time I've known you. Uh, Marcus, uh, would you like to say a few words? Thank you, Avery. Yes, uh, I'm the incumbent. I'm the current chair of the IGFSA Executive Committee, and I have been involved since we set it up. Uh, I was first with ISOC when we generated the idea, and in 2014 then we set up the AGFSA. First, I served as a secretary, and our first mm -hmm. chairman is in the room there, Raul. He chaired it to begin with, and when he uh, stepped down, I was then elected to succeed him as a chair. It was at the IGF in Guadalajara when we also held our general assembly. So I uh, have done a lot of the uh, nitty gritty work that is. Uh, dealing with the incoming funding requests and also then dealing with the banking when after ISOC uh, stopped uh, providing the administrative support, which has proved uh, actually more time consuming than I had anticipated, but it's a worthwhile uh, exercise. And I'm willing uh, to continue and hopefully also we have a uh, the continued support of the executive committee and with the support of DOT Asia that has taken over the, uh, pro the administrative uh, support from, dot, from ISOC and is running the website, which has certainly improved over the past year or so. But I agree with Aidan, uh, we are definitely not perfect and we can do much to make us a better and more efficient uh, organization. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, one point I want to make clear before I, I call on Eduardo is that this is an election for the executive committee. Once the new executive committee is formed, it will then elect a, a, a chair. It, it, it may well be a continuation, but, but just wanted to make sure that we're not doing a vote for a chair at the moment. We're doing a vote for members of the executive committee. And at this point, Eduardo, would you like to uh, say a few words? I don't see you, but. Is he here? Is he here remotely? No, no, Eduardo is not here. Okay, I was gonna say, I. I, I would have recognized him had I seen, but then again, he can't. So in which case, uh, Eduardo has been a member of the executive committee and uh, wishes to continue being a member of the executive committee. He's been a good colleague. I don't know what more there is to say since he's not here. He has, he has provided a written statement. Oh, he has provided a written statement. Yes, if there is a written statement, I didn't know. I, I only took over this duty at the very last minute and am ignorant. So I will, um, my name is Jennifer Chung. I'm su supporting as the Secretariat of the IGFSA. Um, and I'm gonna read the written statement provided by Eduardo. Dear IGFSA members, with almost 20 years of work experience and issues relating to the internet and human development, I have become aware of the importance of generating opportunities for discussion in national, regional, and global in the general framework of internet governance, contribute to improve internet contributions in development objectives. My interest in participating in the IGFSA Executive Committee has its origin and meaning in the fulfillment of this responsibility for promoting governance dialogues, and that is why my commitment to participating in it is natural. On the other hand, I consider it also appropriate to have a voice and action from Latin America in the executive committee and thereby encourage greater participation of people in this discussion spaces. I am an active member of the Colombian Internet Governance Board and a recurring participant in the regional areas of governance dialogue in Latin America and in the IGF itself, Eduardo Santoyo. Thank you very much, Jennifer. So that is the three statements. Now, as I understand the procedure, and I will be corrected if I am wrong, that those of you that are members and paid up 
your dues as of now. Uh, we'll come to Jennifer and get a ballot, fill the ballot out, turn them into Jennifer. At the end of the meeting, I will read the results of the election. And um, I don't know whether I'll need to help you with the counting or whether you'll do it, but I will help. And at this point, therefore, we'll start the balloting. Those that are members, come get your ballot. And I turn the meeting back over to our chair. There is a question. Oh, please. Uh, Tracy, actually, the email votes are being tallied as well. Excuse me? The email votes are being tallied as well. Email votes. Hi, this is Jennifer. The email votes that have been sent in by the deadline, which is this, uh, this previous Saturday, have been tallied already and will be included in the final count. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions before I turn the... Yes, please. Some, some, some from my community, they are still just trying to pay up. So I don't know. Yeah. They are behind paying and some Okay, so I guess what happens is you'll get in line. If you've paid, you'll get a ballot. If you haven't paid, you can pay and get a ballot. <laughs> She's frozen. Okay, and in the meantime, be patient with, with Jennifer. You can listen to the rest of the meeting from standing in line. And um, as I said, I'm really trying to pass this back to Marcus. So Marcus, I've passed it back to you. Thank you, Aubrey. You did that in masterly fashion. Uh, let's get back then to our regular agenda. The next item is on the agenda is adoption of the contents of the reports and financial statements for the year. And uh, we have a slight uh, anomaly, you can say, we always say the uh, annual membership goes from General Assembly to General Assembly. So you are now paying the membership for the year that is ending now with the General Assembly. But according to our bylaws, our financial years follows the Swiss financial year that is from January the 1st till December the 31st. So the financial statement we have up on our website is for the, uh, for the year 2018. And we have also the financial statement for the first half of this year up, but we don't have a financial statement that goes from General Assembly to General Assembly. But let me walk you through the, uh, uh, the uh, annual report, which is on our website. And, uh, well, we could show it and scroll through it, but uh, I think Jennifer is too busy now with yeah. collecting money, so it's not worth it. But the, you can find it on our website. We have all the supporting documents under the General Assembly. Uh, last year, we, in uh, Paris, uh, we elected uh, two new members to the executive committee, Makan Fay, who is in the room, and uh, Nilmini Rubin, she is not here in Berlin, and we re-elected uh, Marilyn Cade and Avri Doria, whose term was ended. And that uh, brings us then the composition of the executive committee uh, we had before. And when Tarek passed away, we felt it was necessary to fill his uh, post. And the executive committee appointed Nigel Hickson to finish uh, Tarek's term, which will end next year. And then the seat will also be open for election. And with that, uh, we have a, a complete executive committee. And then at the end uh, of the vote today, we have the newly constituted executive committee for the year that will follow this General Assembly. And I mentioned uh, already the Dot Asia, and Jennifer is the uh, secretary, and Dot Asia provides the support for the payment system for the website and so on. We also, according to the bylaws, have to notify the uh, General Assembly of the new members that have joined the association. It's a very simple procedure. You join when you pay your membership dues. 
and the list of the new members is in the annual report. It's and with the new, newly uh, ex, uh, members, the newly paid members, it brings the total up to 226 uh, members of the association, which is uh, not bad, I think. Uh, could be higher and we also hope that we get more members from the NRIs, especially as we have a very close relationship with them. But I'm encouraged to see the good attendance also at this uh, General Assembly, which is really uh, quite impressive. Uh, Fundraising, uh, and there I also have to agree with Aidan that we are have not been particularly uh, successful. We have two very solid supporters, that is ICANN and the Numbers Resource as Organization. They both gave us 50,000 each. We had a contribution from Affilias for 3,500, from LAC TLD for 1,500, and Google made a contribution of uh, 10,000. That was a second contribution of 10,000 uh, this year, and a third contribution of Google is in the pipeline, but it's not yet in our bank account, but I come to that also at uh, the later stage. The contribution from Google is earmarked for enhancing accessibility in the IGF context, and we have so far used most of that for paying for real-time transcription for the MAG calls, that was a very strong request from the community of the uh, Dynamic Coalition for Accessibility for People with Disabilities, and I welcome here also uh, Gudrun, she is, uh, and Judy as well. She, they are from that coalition and very active uh, members also of IGFSA. So since our inception, we have raised uh, $869,000 uh, and $511, so close to 870, which is not bad, but obviously it's uh, not good enough. Also given the growing demand uh, on behalf of the national and regional IGFs. And to begin with, we used to have a fairly a rigid uh, budget allocation when we said we give that many percentage uh, to the IGF Trust Fund, that much to the NRIs, but we re-adopted the uh, strategy of the budget allocation as we saw the NRIs with the growing number that just needed more money, and we now prioritize uh, the NRIs we still give a fund to the IGF Trust Fund, which is administered by the UN, by UN DESA, but the bulk goes to uh, the national and regional IGFs. So since the General Assembly last year, IGFSA contributed a total of 97,000 US dollars to the NRIs. 35,000 went to nine regional and sub-regional IGFs and 62,000 to 31 national initiatives. At, in total, we have spent more than $400,000 now on the uh, national and regional IGFs. I'm not going to read out all the uh, list. I mean, again, it's in the annual report, but... Uh, the regional ones, it's in, and we only, I think it's also important to mention that we limit our payment to uh, IGFs that are in developing countries or in economies of transition. So there are the national and regional IGFs we supported are located in all the continents and ranging, as it's going through the list, from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe, from A to Z. And we made a contribution of $10,000 to the IGF Trust Fund. That brings a total so far of $280,000 to the IGF Trust Fund. 
And lastly, I would like to mention again the accessibility fund with a third contribution from Google. We are funding uh, three DCAD members to attend this IGF. There was a meeting of the Dynamic Coalition uh, was uh, yesterday, I think, and allowed them to participate and they're active participants in all related workshops. And maybe also to mention that we uh, use, uh, make the ICANN meetings where ICANN graciously usually gives us a room for holding executive committee meetings and also we have taken to uh, having informal meetings with NRIs for an exchange of information and they're usually much appreciated and our thanks go to ICANN for this in-kind contribution. Now, one question I would, no, one suggestion I would like to make, you have seen the uh, little leaflet, we have a flyer, we need to update it and hopefully we will have also new and fresh pictures and we encourage you to send us pictures also of your meetings if you have any. And the uh, Co Colombian IGF, they gracefully translated it into Spanish, so that would be a suggestion and a request that whenever you have a national regional IGF that you would translate it in your national language. We could have an Arabic leaflet, I'm looking to say here. That, and we could have region for Francophone, Afrique in French, and uh, maybe also in, eventually in all UN languages. That would be great. And one question I would like to put, well, there's also a, a more technical issue. We did say last year in Paris that we would appreciate if requests are made well in advance of the meeting. That is maybe four weeks ahead of the meeting. That would be reasonable. It's also in their interest as you would get the funds ahead of the meeting. Sometimes we read requests just a few days ahead of a meeting which is virtually impossible then to make the payment in time and the payment then arrives at the end of the meeting. But this is definitely one thing uh, where we can be also a little bit firmer. We did say last year in Paris we would, yes, we would use this as a guideline, but we would adapt, adapt, uh, adopt it in a flexible manner. And yes, we do understand that sometimes you need to change uh, dates, but uh, it's better to send it a uh, request as early as possible and you can always say uh, dates may change well, if they're, but at least that we have a date and then we can actually deal with it. We're usually very quick at reacting and getting back to you and saying yes we will support the meeting but the payment takes usually a bit longer. So, and the other question, uh, and was raised by uh, uh, Aidan, whether we should actually ask for more. Uh, we do encourage reporting on the event, and, but we have not asked for a strict financial report, and this uh, is something we wish to do, as was suggested. I don't know whether anybody has an opinion on that. Or maybe Aidan, would you like to pick up on that? What exact? What would you expect in uh, the financial statement to see? Thanks, Marcus. This is Aidan. So not necessarily uh, looking for a line by line breakdown of what the money has been spent on. Not to that extent. I think it's more just helpful to know what are the, what is the IGF essays money actually going towards? So just as a high level. What are some of the outcomes that have been possible because of the funding? So I don't need to know that they have spent uh, X dollars on catering or X dollars on you know, printing of material, but just an idea as to be what were the outcomes that were made possible as a result of this funding so that we're able perhaps to then highlight the work of the various national and regional initiatives that have been funded. Thank you. Makan, please. And, and can you also please introduce yourself? And Makan is a member of our executive committee. Thank you committee. very much. I am uh, 
a member of the executive committee since last year, and I've been member of the IGFSA since uh, it's, uh, the day that it was created and participated in all its general assemblies. Uh, uh, at the African level, I know that IGFSA has contributed a lot. With the seed money they are giving, it enabled many countries to start their national process. Because when they give you, uh, in some countries, $2,000, you can run a whole meeting the whole day. And uh, this was very important to start the process and get funding after. Uh, and in the African regional level also, we have five uh, separation IGF which receive funding. It also it helps them to bring uh, some people because they are just uh, from country to a country to, to, to the meeting. Some of them will drive, some of them uh, will come uh, by their own means. Uh, and sometimes also it is used to uh, uh, rent some uh, uh, equipment or buy food or pay for coffee breaks and so on, while we use other fundings to uh, supplement uh, uh, the IGFSA. So uh, I think uh, the, the IGFSA money use is, is very important. And as you have seen today, you have seen many Africans coming today to join because they have seen uh, the effect IGFSA's uh, seed money, which is not really um, big money, but seed money, which we, it is a catalytic fund which can bring other money and other people around. Thank you. Thank you, Makan. Uh, yeah, hang on, there were two ladies who asked for the floor first, please. Thank you very much. Liana Galstian speaking, Armenia IGF, uh, just on the reporting and how the money is being spent on uh, regional and national IGFs and the reporting. Um, actually, I, would, I appreciate a lot that we do not give a detailed reporting of what, on what is being paid for, because when we specifically ask for funding from the sponsors and uh, we are given like this money should go only for the printing materials, only for the conference hall renting, only for this and that. That makes uh, quite difficult to organize the event itself. It, uh, because in order to organize the, the, the event, you need all these components being there. And if you have a specific thing, even the social, uh, the socials that we do, this is the networking of all the participants this is so much important, but some sponsors uh, do not give money for such things. And I really appreciate IGFSA that they do not uh, demand on these details, accounting on detailed reporting on what we, we spend money on specifically on that budget item. We do spend that for the event itself, for the whole composition of it. And it brings the value for the discussions and bringing people on this event. So uh, I would just say, uh, and uh, by the way, um, thanking uh, on behalf of the Armenian IGF and uh, the Southeastern European IGF for the continuous support that IGFSA uh, is giving for our um, initiatives and that uh, really brings uh, the impact, as Aidan was saying about the impact of uh, the IGFs. I do see this impact on uh, national levels and what we're doing and advancing the discussions on the IG forum. Thank you. Thanks. I see the more people asking for the floor, Oksana, but also I saw Chris and uh, Edmund. Yes, Oksana first. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I'm Oksana Prihotka. I'm from Ukraine. I am member of IGF UA steering committee, and I am observer uh, at use IGF UA. Uh, and uh, we uh, applied for both IGFs, uh, and it's extremely uh, important for us to receive your answer that you give money for. Uh, how to say main uh, national initiative, uh, but uh, you advise uh, to uh, to help use IGF initiative. Uh, such a situation helps to avoid uh, multiplication of uh, um, use IGF initiatives, and it's uh, very it's extremely important for uh, transparency of uh, all internet governance process. Thank you very much once again for all your support. Thank you, uh, Chris. Thanks, Marcus. Uh, Chris Buckridge, I work for RIPE NCC, so um, an organizational supporter. I'm also now a personal member of the IGFSA. Um, just in terms of uh, Aidan's comments and the, the discussion of um, 
recording what money is used for, I think there are, there's two aspects to it. One, that obviously it's very important in terms of due diligence about how the money is being spent, transparency. Um, but I think there's also the parallel um, possibility there to start to use that to sort of find best practices, to share information about how money is most usefully spent, and that can be something that's, that's of use to other national or regional initiatives. Um, I, in that sense also, I mean, the, the last couple of IGF events, global IGF events, have had a lot of very specific sessions about NRIs and put, coming from the NRIs, um, which are doing a lot of that kind of sharing best practice, developing best practice. Um, so um, what I would encourage the executive committee, I guess, and I'm not sure how much this has been done explicitly, but is to make sure that there is that, that integration with the NRO, NRI processes and discussions going on in the IGF um, to make sure that the kind of data that IGFSA is getting back on how money is best used is being fed into those NRI discussions and that that's also being fed back here into how we, the IGFSA might best be distributing its funds. Um, perhaps that's already been going on behind the scenes, but I, I haven't seen a lot of explicit um, linkage between IGFSA and the NRI work going on in the IGF. Yeah, well, just uh, on that, I mean, we work very closely with the Secretariat. It's the requests we receive. Uh, we always ask the IGF Secretariat whether they are national region, whether they have reported, done the reporting, whether they're essentially in good standing, whether they're eligible for support. And also, you mentioned the sessions. I'm going to participate in this afternoon's NRI coordination session for precisely doing uh, that sort of discussion, but as always, more can be done and maybe also we can be re report a little bit more and document a bit more about the processes. But Edmund? Yeah, Edmund Chung here, also on the IGFSA uh, Executive Committee. Um, Marcus, you actually pointed out the thing that I want to make uh, uh, mention. It's that um, the IGFSA, traditionally, we have uh, uh, depended on the IGF uh, overall, or I mean the IGF Secretariat, in terms of receiving reports from the NRIs, uh, and we make sure that they have pr provided the previous report, and also we expect them to, uh, uh, after their implementation, do the next report, and that gives us a, a, an indication of where, uh, um, you know, how, how the funds are spent and how those initiatives are going. Um, and I think a couple of the uh, uh, colleagues have, have mentioned that uh, adding paperwork is probably not a uh, uh, is probably uh, burdensome however I take I, I take Chris uh, thought in in whether the IGFSA perhaps the, the uh, exco or, or with the secretariat's help can can do a little bit more in terms of uh, gathering some of the the learning from from the NRI uh, together with the IGF uh, secretariat uh, and and even publish it on uh, you know or repost it on on our website uh, or or both on the IGF website and on our website I think that's a that's a good uh, suggestion you anticipated what would have been my concluding remarks. <laughs> but the, no, I mean, the, we can definitely document also the success stories. Now, can ask the NRI say, can you please tell us how did it help you? And just it can be short, and also pictures can help, or videos can help for the website. But I see there, we have to be, we have 30 minutes left, and we're told we have really to leave the room at half past. But can you be short on that, Aidan, please, and then, yes. Sure, I'll be, I'll be very short. Um, I appreciate all the comments that I've just heard and the, and the context that you've provided. And I think the goal here would just be light touch reporting. No one is asking for detailed financials for a seed grant of $2,000. But I think if we look at really the dire financial situation the IGFSA is in, if there is to be a desire to embark upon additional fundraising, in order to be able to create some kind of professional fundraising package, in order to be able to highlight to potential donors the work that the IGFSA is doing, it is useful to know those outcomes that have come from the funding that the IGFSA provides. So again, looking for something light touch and only with the vision to be able to increase the amount of donations that are coming in so that more funds can ultimately be dispersed to the various national and regional initiatives. That was just what I was suggesting. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, please. Hi, this is Babu from Nepal, <coughs> Nepal IGF. 
we are hosting APRIGF uh, 2020 in Nepal as well. I got uh, one confusion uh, about the relation between IGF SA and uh, IGF Trust Fund. Uh, when uh, last year we had applied for IGF SA fund for Nepal IGF, uh, last, not last year, this year, uh, we also received a fund from Secretariat and uh, we got uh, information that when you got uh, support from uh, trust fund, then will not support uh, those NRIs. So what is exactly uh, the relation between these two funds and uh, why not uh, uh, to fund the same uh, event uh, by uh, two? Is there any uh, decision or by laws uh, that mention that you should not get uh, that thing? And another thing is, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I want to uh, get some clarity on uh, regional IGF, uh, as we are host of uh, APR IGF 2020, uh, are we eligible for applying for support or uh, it goes to the Secretariat of APR IGF to apply for this? Thank you. Well, this year the Secretariat came in possession of some additional funds that were used then to support some national regional IGFs. We looked at that and we thought it would be stretch, uh, given the fact that there are increasing numbers of demands, that allows us to support more IGFs if we don't double fund the Secretariat and we, a national IGF, and that is a simple reason of we don't have enough funds, we want to fund the requests that come in, and for some, in that case, some uh, national regional IGFs would be then the very lucky ones who will get funding from two sources, so we early on coordinated with the Secretariat and said, no, we will give you the, let you have the priority, choose your uh, national, uh, your NRIs, and we step back with those. But that's essentially in order to stretch our funds to go as far as possible. Can we close the discussion on this agenda item? So, uh, one thing is not clear at... Uh, we don't have the time. No. But I remember I have, this is General Assembly that I, I need to give, uh, get clarity. Yes. Is this decision discretionary or it's by rule? It's a decision by the Executive Committee. A discretionary level? Yes. Yes. Right? Okay. Uh, Avri has something to I say. I just wanted to take a quick check because we're closing receipt of ballots. So wanted to make sure that everybody that wanted a ballot got one and turned it in because they'll be counted and such. So this is your last chance. Thank you, Avri. Can we then go to the next agenda item? And I would ask uh, Jameson, our treasurer, to walk us through the annual budget and the finance, and the finance situation. Please, Jameson. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Marcus, uh, and uh, good afternoon, everyone, or oh, morning, those, wherever you may be around the world. Well, uh, our chair actually giving us a very detailed account of uh, how our funding has been spent, and uh, we have, all the details are there, right there, on the, on the website. Uh, but uh, up to this moment, maybe right up to this moment, uh, I could say that um, we just have a slight change in the uh, situation, uh, financial situation. Um, we have a revised balance of $51,166. as uh, against $43,000 that you can see in that September report. So all the other parameters uh, r remain uh, the same. Um, the total credit so far uh, for 2019 is $115,000. Total credit, 2019 up to this moment. And um, total debit, $122,944.30. One hundred twenty-two thousand nine four four thirty cents. So this, the situation at the high level, 
We have uh, discussed a lot on finance. Uh, let me also make this comment that uh, the original objective, uh, yes, we are getting to it gradually, but we're still far away from it because uh, we expected that we will have massive uh, individual support from members. So we still look forward to that. Uh, we, the executive committee talk about this all the time, and we welcome uh, creative ideas on how we could get more members, and now we can increase our financial base. Um, so this is just basically the situation at the high level. Uh, our funding, as you could see, goes mostly to NRI as they are certified by the Secretariat, IGF Secretariat. So to the NRI, and uh, of course, uh, that is the major purpose, major focus, uh, even though we also do contribution to, uh, to the Secretariat itself and some other funding uh, budget line, like accessibility, uh, like captioning and things like that. So uh, this is where I will stop in case anybody has any question. Thank you. Thank you. Jameson, are there any questions or comments? Can I take it that there is a general agreement that we continue in that way by prioritizing the NRIs, but at the same time continuing making a maybe more modest contribution, like uh, this year we gave 10,000 to the UN IGF Trust Fund, but the bulk of our resources went directly to the NRIs. And also, we have very little uh, overhead in that, so it's really the money goes to them and is for them to use as they see fit, as we discussed. But yes, Mary. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, Dr. Lufuye. Um, my name is Mary Ruduma. I'm from Nigeria and a member of the IGFSA and uh, a good recipient of the, of the awards uh, or, or support from IGFSA, both for my national, regional, and uh, continental. So thank you very much. Uh, just a quick question. Um, I think it was in, in uh, Geneva that uh, IGFSA uh, decided to support um, Anya for, for one year, I suppose, her salary and something like that. I just wanted to know whether it has ended and she's, um, we are not supporting that. Thank you. Yes, that was in the 2018. We paid, I think it was for six months, we paid a fellowship. I mean, it is in our budget. It's as, uh, as services, I think it's, it's for tax, essentially that's a term used for reporting to the tax authorities. But we, it was, I think, a total of more than 50,000 US dollars went into that. It was, it's a bit complex, but before Anya had a consultancy contract with the UN, and you cannot go into a staff contract, you need a, a break. and we funded her during the break where she provided uh, services to the secretariat. It's a, uh, uh, yes, a, a sort of a, a solution to go past the very rigid UN regulation. But I think it was well received also by the NRIs as she was able to continue to provide her service and I think it was a great help to really to create the network of NRIs we have now. Are there other questions, comments? Yes, Kunia. Uh, Gona Last Brink, um, incoming MAG member and member of um, Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility and Disability. And um, on behalf of DCAD and uh, Julio Kaiser as well, uh, we would like to say thank you very much to the IGFSA for the support that IGFSA has provided um, 
uh, for uh, accessibility, and and that is um, the real time text tr uh, transcription for the MAG meetings and uh, and other general support. And in this year in particular, um, the travel support for three persons with disability to enable us. Um, and when I say us, it's Judy Okaita, myself, and uh, Mr. Abdullah um, Dembele. Um, to participate, um, uh, certainly in the DCAD uh, session, but also uh, to participate in other accessibility sessions uh, and, uh, and also generally in the IGF. So that has been very, very beneficial and, and we very much appreciate the support of IGFSA and Marcus, um, who had to do a fair bit of admin uh, at a very late stage stage to make it all come together. So again, thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated your words. Can I take it then that we are in broad agreement uh, with the, it's a very loose budget in a sense that we say we will prioritize the NRIs and give most of our income to the NRIs and reserve a small part of it for the IGF trust fund. Do we have an agreement on that? I take it there's no opposition, so I take silence for agreement and we go ahead in this way, that is, continue as before. The uh, next item would be a discussion on fundraising, but looking at the advanced time, I would like to finish the uh, mandatory agenda items, and the, is also the uh, release of obligations of the executive committee members under Swiss law, any association, the general assembly or the annual general meeting has to vote and to say that the board is not responsible, cannot be held responsible for any act because we agree as an association with the activities of the executive committee. We had before used in the in our bylaws, it's used another word, it's discharge, which is translated from the French, but we noticed that for English speakers, it's totally incomprehensible. And the new wording, release of obligations, is actually what is more used, I think, in Anglo-Saxon countries. So can we have your vote that we released of our obligations? That means you found that everything was done according to the bylaws in a proper way, maybe not perfect, but at least uh, it was nothing improper happened and the money was well spent. Can I see heads nodding? Yes. Or hands up? Yes. <laughs> anyone, anyone against it? No? Okay. I can take it then that the executive committee can call itself lucky. We have been released of our obligation. And with that, can we go to back to the voting? I'm waiting for the final check count. We had a count, and it's now being checked. So I'll say one thing about fundraising. Last time, we had a great conversation on fundraising. And we got an agreement from everybody that was there that they were going to work, because it wasn't just the executive committee that had to do fundraising. And I was supposed to send an email out to the list saying, hey, remember, folks, we're going to, and, and I did send my email. The other thing, so I just wanted to bring that up. I'm not asking people to have the conversation again, just reminding that think about it. Think about how you all can help in fundraising. It's not just the executive committee. The other thing is on crowdfunding, we spent a bit of time this year, and, and the, the secretariat has set up a, a venue, but we wanted to make sure with Swiss law that everything was done right, that, that money coming in, that we didn't fall afoul of any money laundering type laws or anything because of the money crossing borders and everything. I think we're in fairly good shape on that. So I think we'll be coming out with email for you. Obviously, there's many ways you can do fundraising on your own in terms of crowdsource funding, but we have set up one directly, so it's a thing to do. So do we have a ballot? We do, but one, one, total, one last total. One a last total? Yes. 
Thank you, Avri, for that. You introduced that really very well, and you again anticipated what I was trying to say. We also look at the members for fundraising. Right. And one thought I just had, can we not set up a committee outside the executive committee sure. for fundraising, a committee of volunteers? Yeah, and, and, and I'm willing to help with that. I have a hard time fundraising, one, because I'm incompetent at it, but two, because of a position on the ICANN Board of Directors. I have trouble going and asking people for money and saying, but it has nothing to do with that. So, and, and, and I won't, you know, I won't pay. So, but I'm willing to help organize a committee and, 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 and do the administrative stuff for, you know, this is probably my last year on the executive committee. So I'm willing to help do that if you want, but, because uh, I'm not going to raise any myself. Thank you. Well, this is also a little bit, we don't really have anyone on the executive committee with ex extensive experience in right. fundraising, and this is also a, a job in its right. itself. So I, any of you that are really good fundraisers, that are really pros at it, that you know how to get money from a stone, <laughs> uh, you know, get in touch with me and let's figure out what we can do to sort of get some money from all of those stones. We have a result. Do you want to announce, or should I announce, or how do we want to I'll do break. it? Okay, then give me something that tells me. Oh, okay. <laughs> the total votes are here. Okay, so Just, I'll read out. Oh, Oops. Sorry about that. Now it was me. That, the total is that. Okay, so in terms of the votes, we have Marcus Coomer received 33 votes, Eduardo Sant Santoyo received 27 votes. And Aiden Fertiline received seven votes. We therefore have our two continuing executive committees. Thank you to all the candidates. Thank you for your statements and everything. Thank you. And thank you guys for the counting and the recounting. I don't know your names, but thank you. <laughs> and thank you, Avri, for conducting this maneuver so competently and energetically. And I'd also like to th thank Aiden personally for uh, stepping forward. I think it's much appreciated. We need initiatives from the members. And, well, I wonder whether Aiden, would that be something for you to lead sort of a fundraising committee of members? You don't have to, I don't want to put you on the spot. You don't have to say yes or no now, but uh, just think about it. And I have absolutely no objection to you leading it and me stepping back. So don't feel that you'll be getting in my way at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> are, are there any other comments on fundraising, crowdfunding, brilliant ideas, what we could do? We had sort of at one point, you know, can we do something during ICANN meetings, have a, I don't know, a, a run for fun or so where people have to pay or uh, there may be plenty. I mean, the original idea when we actually started the IGFSA was we're not going after the big money, but we try to find contributions from you and me, from small donors. It was sort of Remember then Obama had did a lot of fundraising through crowdfunding and actually managed to get a lot of money through that. And we thought many $5 notes make also a big uh, sum, but we have never been particularly successful in getting that together. So if anyone has suggestions, ideas, we have still 10 minutes and 17 seconds in this room. So we rushed and now we got time. Well, That's good. <laughs> I thought in case we get yeah, no, down no, a rabbit hole with fundraising, <laughs> but we can have, a, have 10 minutes for some brainstorming. Any comments are welcome. We also have any other business. We can't have that as together as one agenda item. Any comments, any suggestions, feel free to step in. If not, I give you back 10 minutes of your life. Yes, please. <laughs> As a suggestion, thank you very much, Marcus. Leanna Gossen speaking. Uh, maybe we could activate the social media on IGFSA so that to promote the, the things that you're doing, the supporting the national and regional initiatives. So all of the uh, NRIs, what they do in their activities, they 
put that on a social media, but I do not see the same for the IGFSA. So we can do, and in this way, uh, spread the word and uh, showcase the whole success that we do worldwide. Thanks. Again, uh, this is something maybe we could do with volunteers from the community to help us. I'm not particularly good with social media. I, I admit I, I, it. But, uh, you know, it, it's, we said, and that goes also on the line, just document a little bit the success stories. And I think it also helps with fundraising. The more dynamic we look, the better we are. Edmund? Yeah. Uh, Edmund Chung here. I, I think that's a good good uh, suggestion. What 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 the secretariat maybe can can help do is repost, because um, because a lot of the uh, NRIs themselves would be promoting and dis discussing their 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 own initiatives. Uh, all uh, what what we want to do is amplify that, and and that's that might uh, allow us to allow people to see uh, the the events uh, activities that we. We support and um, also, you know, make them more interested in supporting us overall. I just continuing what Edmund said. I mean, um, we're really happy to showcase the work that is done in all the different initiatives and in, in the national regional initiatives. Of course, if you have pictures as well, we would be really happy to repost and put that on the official IGFSA social media and website. I know the IGF Secretariat, um, their Twitter account and their other social media definitely does repost a lot of things. So um, we're looking forward to doing that for all the IGFSA members as well. Yeah, and just watching the, um, even though we didn't formalize the uh, remote participation, we have had a couple people commenting. And I do have a comment from, uh, from Jolly that says, any crowdfunding campaign needs a good promo video. And I hope that that partially means that Jolly is willing to help us put together a good promo video. So thank you. We also had a message from the Microboss Abuja Remote Hub saying congratulations to the new executive team. Thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, Trolley is a, a video master, so I'm let's master. <laughs> let's work with Trolley. Uh, Nigel, did you want to say anything? Yes, thank you, N Nigel Hicks and I can. I, I just, just wondered, uh, you know, and I, I recognize that $25, you know, is not a vast vast amount, but there does seem to be a, a whole uh, range of people, as you say, the, the NRIs themselves that, that are supported, but also, you know, if you take the number of people that registered for this, uh, you know, for this conference, and uh, I, I, I think uh, we need to perhaps try and get that message out stronger to, to registrants for these types of meetings, that this sort of you know, the IGFSA isn't something that sits on the side. Well, we do sit on the side, but, you know, it's not like another club. It's, it's a direct contributor to the, to the success of these overall meetings. Thank you. That was very much the original idea. When you think there are 2,000 people or whatever, or 3,000, if each gives 10 francs or 10 euros, it's quite a lot of money. So maybe we should put, be putting little envelopes, donate to the IGFSA and all of the back the bags. One idea, except we are now in competition with the Mac does that for the IGF. They, they do? They produce they put money bag? They put money envelopes? <laughs> they produced a little leaflet. I think it'll be on the seats tomorrow. But. Oh, but, but if we got it in the bags, then it wouldn't be competition. <laughs> there is that. Any other comments, suggestion, or can, yes, please, can you introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Michael, I'm French, and it's my pleasure to be here. I'm a brand new member, and I give you, uh, I give to, I give my first vote. <laughs> anyway, uh, I just have an idea, it's very simple. I am on your Facebook page, and I don't know if you know, but you are allowed to put a donate, a donation button. Just an idea. But all, you see, this is crowdsourcing wisdom. This is a, a simple suggestion, but a very excellent suggestion. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. And they uh, are. Just a comment on that. It's one of the things that over the year and getting a new secretariat in place and that was we had to have an account to have the donate go into, oh. but, but we just recently got there. So thank you for reminding okay, us that that was welcome. something we needed to do. Thank you. 
I will, you, you were first, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, just, just following up uh, on, on that suggestion, uh, um, there is a program called DonorBox that some of you may know, and, uh, and, and that is underlying that button uh, for donate uh, if you put that on a website. And, uh, and I believe it's quite useful and streamlined, so it, it would be worthwhile checking into DonorBox. I will, I, I, there's another one, but I, I will come out and basically send to the list at some point a reminder so then we can get the people that are into doing something to sort of help get all these things done because we're really good at coming up with ideas at these meetings and then a year goes by and we go, we should have done so, please. Thank you very much, good afternoon and congratulations to Marcus Kumar. The, this is Mohammed Abdullah Onu from Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum. I'm serving the Secretary General of Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum. It is my uh, privilege to uh, Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer is, uh, I, I am a new member. Uh, this year I am uh, giving to a uh, membership fee. Uh, so thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for that. Welcome. Uh, uh, Judy, you want to say something, please? Thank you, Marcus. Um, just to follow up on uh, what Gunella is saying, we could have uh, actually a box at the IGFSA uh, booth whenever we have the IGF meeting so that if somebody is not able to give the $25 or they don't want to really be a member, they can just drop in whatever it is that they have. Another good suggestion. Doesn't cost much. It's worth trying. If there are no more comments, no more suggestions, no more questions. Can I take it then we have exhausted our agenda? And with that, I would like to thank you all for attending and for being active participants in the meeting and close the meeting and until next year. But let's stay in touch and let's not drop the ball in between two annual meetings. Thank you all. Thank you very much.
I would have done 